You can support Retro Recollections on Patreon, just like these wonderful folks. Thank you for your support. Okay, today's video is going to be slightly different, um, mainly because the project so far has been a bit of a failure. <laughs> I've got this wonderful little gadget, uh, thanks to um, a kind donation by friend of the channel, Dave Velociraptor, and this is a serial interface for the Amstrad CPC. Now. These are a pittance to, to produce or even to purchase. I think on eBay, there are between 10 and 15 pounds, minus the, uh, the connector here, the adapter. But even with that, if you take that into account in the, the USB cable the, to serial adapter cable, it's a very reasonable uh, price to pay for something that may potentially be able to load games almost instantaneously into the CPC. Now I say potentially because I've run into a few problems. Now I'll start by saying I did get it working briefly and the way this works is you use this plugs into the um, into the expansion port at the back of the CPC and it basically creates a serial interface for it and it gives you certain features like a reset button and a pause button and the way to connect this would be would be to your PC. Now the chap who's uh, been producing, I think he may have designed the board, I'm not sure, but he, he is quite active on the CPC wiki forums. It's a guy called Icon SPGR and he seems to be he produces these and I think he sells them on eBay. As I say, this one I got kindly got from Dave. But you can, I think it's all open source, so you could produce this yourself. And he's um, supplied some software to go with it. So basically, in theory, you connect that to the CPC and then there's three different ways you can connect this to make it useful. I've got a USB to serial adapter cable here, uh, which I've connected three of the four wires to. The red one is the five volt. You don't want to connect that if you're using this. You just need the ground and the two data, data cables. And the software can do various different things. Now, because I've got a 464, I don't have a disk drive. Uh, it's slightly less useful, but there are ways around it. Ideally, you want a, a CPC with a disk drive, and then you can basically load the sort of the loader software into that, and then use this in various different ways. The first issue I've come across, obviously, is not having the 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 um, disk drive, but Icon, as I'll call him from now, because it's easier to say, has kindly provided some. Um, some basic um, files, .bas in format, uh, for the CPC, as well as it is, I think he's produced bin formats of them as well. Uh, and using a little bit of software called 2CDT, I've, I was able to convert those into CDT cassette files to use with my MX Duino device here so that wasn't a problem uh, I wanted to use the direct load function with this which basically means you load up a little file and using the using the cassette port cassette it's a five a five line basic program which you can then load via you can either type it in every time or load it via the, uh, a, a cassette file or a disk if you've got a disk drive and then Whenever you load things, try to load software into the CPC, the Windows software that goes with this creates a direct link to the CPC and you can basically load software directly through the PC 
you can you set a directory and, and so on and so forth. And it's pretty instantaneous. So this would be a fantastic solution to get working. And the main problem I'm having, although I get it to work once, is that the Windows 10 driver for the serial adapter try, is trying to tell me that it's no longer supported. And I had to do a bit of research and I found a website where you can roll back the driver to a, a 2008 driver and it's supposed to work. Now I did this and it worked briefly, but ever since I, that, I haven't been able to get it to work. So I've spent hours on it trying to restart it all and reload stuff and get it to work, but I couldn't get it to work. So what I'm gonna probably do is gonna use one of the alternative solutions for connection. Uh, you can either use a Wi-Fi module or a Bluetooth module. Wi-Fi would be quite good. Uh, it plugs straight into there and I think it can be powered from there as well and then you can add it to your LAN and then access the software that way and I'm hoping that's going to work a lot better so I'm hoping I'll be able to show you something a little bit more interesting but if you're interested in trying this yourself or you have done and you have better luck than me let me know uh, and I'd love to hear how you figured it out if you're using Windows 10 I'm assuming maybe a Windows 7 machine might be able to run it better, but I'm running Windows 10 and all my files are on a Windows 10 machine. Uh, it's a shame there's no Linux alternative or for a Raspberry Pi or something like that, because I'm wondering whether that would work a bit better. So yeah, stay tuned. And there will be another part to this, hopefully when I can get this all working, and then we'll be able to see how quick it all loads up. But as I said, if you've, I'll put a link in the description to this to see if anybody wants to have a go at this themselves or if you as i said if you have done yourself let me know right that's all that i've got today i'm afraid check out the description for links how you contact me and things like that and i will see you next time bye bye